your Bibles here tonight to the um, Gospel of John here first, and then we'll be in Mark, and then we'll end up in Acts here as we continue our study uh, through the book of Acts. And um, <clears throat> it's good to have everyone out here tonight, and I'm looking forward to what the Lord will do here this evening in and through us. Uh, John chapter 15, and uh, verse 18, John 15, verse 18. <clears throat> if the world hate you, ye knew it hated me before it hated you. If you are of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than its Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they have not known him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not sinned, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other men did, they had not had sin, but now they have both seen and hated both me and my Father. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law, they hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter is come, whom I'll send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Let's pray here tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the scripture we have before us and the other scriptures we'll look at here tonight. And I pray that you would guide our thoughts here tonight. May the Holy Spirit uh, lead us and guide us, help me be a vessel, honor your Son and your Word. And we'll give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> On um, March 3rd here, uh, recently... Um, Republican um, U.S. Representative Jerry uh, actually um, um, Republican St uh, St Strobe uh, tried to explain his concern over the bill, the equality bill that was um, they were voting on, and he um, wanted to give his statement what he thought about it. And um, he was a uh, representative uh, from Florida, and uh, this is what he did in the U.S. House. He said, I'm going to start with the truth. Deuteronomy 22, 5 states, a woman must not, now everybody familiar with the equality bill is, you, you know what we're, we're talking about here. A woman must not wear men's clothing, nor a man wear women's clothing, for the Lord your God detests anyone who does this. Strobe said, now, this verse isn't concerned about clothing styles, but with people determining their own sexual identities. It's not clothing or personal style that offends God, but rather the use of one's appearance to act out or take on sexual identity different from one's biological assigned to them by God at birth. The congressman added, In his wisdom, God intentionally made each individual unique, either male or female. When men or women claim to be able to choose their own sexual identity, they are making a statement that God did not know what he was doing when he created them. Now, this is what Mr. Uh, Jerry Nadler said in response, Mr. Strobe, what any religious tradition ascribes to God is God's will is no concern of this Congress. That's what he said. Now, if you are a Christian, how does that affect you? What do you think about that? What did he do to us as Christians? He just what? Brushed aside. What did he do with God's word? Just brushed it aside. Just swept it right off the table. Um, what I just read here tonight, look at verse 18. If the world hates you, know that it hated me before it what? Hated you. Is there going to be this tension between righteousness and unrighteousness in the world? Is there a tension there? There is. There, there is a tension drawn there. And that tension is not going away till we get to heaven. That tension is always going to be there between good and evil, right and wrong. 
believers and unbelievers, uh, the Word of God and those that take a stand against the Word of God. Now, um, in that passage in verse 18, if the world hates you, know that it hated me before it hated you. But look at verse 26. Now, that's what we find in the world, this, this tension. But look at verse 26 of John 15. But when the comforters come, whom I will send unto you from the Father. Now, the comforter is who? The Holy Spirit. Whom I send unto you in the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, shall testify of me. And ye also shall, what's those next two words in verse 27? Bear witness. Now, we as God's people, the world's going to hate us, but what does God want us to do? To bear witness of what? The truth, the gospel, to, to bear witness of what God says. And that's part of the Christian life. Now, what was uh, Republican uh, Strobe, Representative Strobe doing? He was bearing witness to what? The truth. He, he stood up, he read the truth. Now, if people don't receive the truth, is he responsible for that? No, he's not responsible. But did he do what he should do? He did what he should do. And so we've got to understand that the Holy Spirit is going to give us opportunities to be what? A testimony. That we are given opportunities to testify to the truth. Now, the Holy Spirit is given that we shall bear witnesses. Now, with that in mind, turn to Gospel of Mark here. Uh, following the same thought here, bearing witness, being a testimony, Mark 13. Verse 9, Mark 13, verse 9. But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to the councils. And in the synagogues ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a what? A testimony. God is going to work situations in your life that he's going to give you opportunities to testify. Now, sometimes people will hear you. They'll, they'll hear the word of God and they'll respond. But other times they don't hear you. But nevertheless, they will have a testimony. They will, God will give you opportunities. You will have situations where you will be a testimony against them. Verse 10, the gospel must be first published among all nations. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, verse 11, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, neither do ye premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but what? The Holy Spirit. Now, what is God saying there? He's saying, now, have you ever been in a tense situation and you just don't know what to say? You ever get so nervous and your, your heart's pounding and you just, you don't know what to do? In those moments when you've got to give a testimony, you may say to yourself, I don't know what to say. I don't know how to say it. God is giving us the Holy Spirit is going to help you be that testimony and that witness to God of the truth that, that is there. And so what our Lord is trying to encourage us as believers is that the Holy Spirit is going to give us a good word to speak at that moment. And sometimes I know I've witnessed the people and I have pulled verses out of the Bible I haven't thought about in a long time. All of a sudden, boom, it's right there. Or something, because God is helping you to testify, to communicate, to witness, to give counsel. The Holy Spirit is given to us for these things to help us in those moments. Now, that is the backdrop. What I want to direct our thoughts now, Acts 25 here. We're going to look at a servant of God here tonight, Acts 25, that had one of those moments that God helped him uh, through a very difficult situation, Acts chapter 25. We've been going through the book of Acts, verse by verse, chapter by chapter here on Wednesday evenings. We find ourselves tonight, the Apostle Paul. And again, remember the work of the Holy Spirit and how the world feels toward Christians, believers, the gospel, the truth of Scripture. Verse 20, chapter 25, verse 1. Now, when Festus was come into the providence, uh, Felix has just been replaced. Festus is new on the scene. Uh, he's, he's come into the, to being governor. After three days, he ascended from Caesarea to Jerusalem. Uh, he went up to Jerusalem because he wanted to meet all the leadership of the people as he is taking over here, representing Rome as governor. Now, look how quickly he's only arrived on the job three days. Verse 2, then the high priest and the chief of the Jews informed him against who? 
Paul, I mean, he was only there a few days. And, hey, they are dead on Paul. They, they didn't waste. Now, could they have talked about many things? Absolutely. They could have given him a tour of Jerusalem. They could have showed him all around the country of Israel. They could have done all kinds of things. But in the first three days, they were boom, right on Paul. They, and this has been years, because two years he's been held prisoner. Now, you think, now, man, have you ever gotten mad at your wife? Okay, but does it last for two years? Do you know what I'm saying? You, you might get upset for a few hours, but it just goes away and life moves on. Wives have gotten mad at your husbands, but it doesn't last. If you, you know, after two years, you think their anger would have subsided some. They're right on him because they had this, such a deep hatred for Paul. They informed him against Paul and besought him and desired favor against him, verse 3, that we'd send him to Jerusalem. Now, you got to be careful who you trust because all they wanted to do was lie, laying in wait on the way to kill him. Now, Felix knew, what did Felix knew what they tried to do to Paul? They were going to set what? An ambush. But now Festus comes on and he may, he may have known, he may not have known. We don't know. But if he didn't know, it would be a perfect scenario because as he would have brought Paul down to Jerusalem, they could have ambushed him, killed Paul, and had their way. That's what they wanted to do. Bring him to Jerusalem, and uh, we want to hear trial. But Festus answered in verse 4 that he wasn't going to do this thing. Paul should be kept at Caesarea, and that he would depart there shortly. In verse 5, let them therefore said, which among you are able, go down with me and accuse this man if there be any wickedness. Now, Festus' job as governor was to administer Roman law. The law was everything to the Romans, and they were very... You know, you can't bound a Roman citizen. I mean, his job was to hear cases and decide who's guilty and who's innocent, who should be punished, who should be set free. That was his job. Well, he says, you bring him to me, we'll do this in Caesarea. He waited 10 days, verse 6, went to Caesarea, and immediately went on the judgment seat. He's going to start off good. He's going to be governor? Okay, I'm going to hear this case here. And he commanded Paul to be brought. Paul came in. When they come in, verse 7, um, the Jews from Jerusalem stood around him and laid many grievous complaints against Paul, which they could not what? Prove. They couldn't prove it. Nothing has changed all these years. Now, if you were Paul, how would you begin to feel at this point? Give me a little history. What has Paul been through at this point? Okay, he was in the temple, and then some Asian Jews saw him in the temple and accused him of, of bringing Greeks into the temple. And what did they do? They were beating him, and then they, they you know, uh, tried to kill him. And then the centurion came, rescued him, and secured him, interviewed him. Then the Jews wanted to kill Paul. And, um, and, but before that, they, they went before the council, and he defended himself, and the council couldn't find anything wrong with him. And then he went to Felix and had his thing, and nothing came of that. And now the years are dragging on. Would you get a little impatient with all this when you hadn't done anything worthy of imprisonment? Would that have worn on you? Well, yeah. And now he's going and having the case again. But they couldn't prove it. Verse 8, while he answered for himself, neither against the law of the Jews, neither against the temple, nor against Caesar, have I offended at all. Now, Festus willing to do the Jews a what? Pleasure. Now, see, what was he should have done? He should have administered what? Just, the law, justice. Is this man guilty or innocent? What is he? And then gave a verdict. That's his job. Either you're innocent, Paul, or you're guilty. If you're guilty, this is punishment. You're innocent, you're free. But can politics blind men's eyes? Can their philosophy of life blind them? And so they're not, they're not ministers of justice anymore. They're not keeping the law. They become a law unto their own selves. They do what they want to do. They do what's expedient, not what's right. They want to do the Jews a pleasure. Answer Paul, well, okay, Paul, why don't you, will you be willing to go to Jerusalem? Because that's what they originally wanted and be judged before them. Now, if you're a Paul, your immediate thought would be what? If he went back to Jerusalem, what's going to happen? They already tried it one time. What's going to happen if he goes back to Jerusalem? They're going to kill him. Is that fair? 
Paul said, I haven't done anything worthy of death. So he knew if he went back there, he wasn't going to get a fair what? You're not going to get a fair trial. And if he went back there, he might endanger what? His life? I mean, this isn't looking good for him. Now, at that moment, what are you going to do? He's a prisoner. How do you get out of this trap? See, at those moments, you know what? The Holy Spirit can give you a, a word of wisdom and a word of knowledge. The Holy Spirit can open your mind and all of a sudden you realize something you never saw before. Maybe you didn't play this card before. But all of a sudden, in the providence of God, with the Holy Spirit's help, Paul said, I stand at whose judgment seat? In verse 10. See, he's a Roman citizen. He's, not being, he's being held by Rome, not by the Jewish people. And you know what every Roman citizen had the right? If they felt they weren't getting a fair trial, they could always appeal to who? Caesar. That was, that was the law. And all of a sudden, Paul, in this dilemma, he's trapped because he realized that what Festus was going to do to him, he wasn't going to get a fair trial. And if he goes to Jerusalem, they're going to kill him. And he's not going to get a fair trial there. He's not going to get a fair trial. How do I get out of this dilemma? I've been here for how long? Two years he's just been hanging around. And all of a sudden, you know what? By putting that on the table, he goes, and Paul said, I stand at Caesar's judgment seat where I ought to be judged. To the Jews I have done no wrong, as thou knowest, as thou very well knowest. For if I be an offender, I have committed anything worthy of death, I refuse not to die. But if there be none of these things whereof they accuse me, no man may deliver me unto them, I appeal to Caesar. When he put that on the table, guess what? All of a sudden from the Jews, he was plucked out of their hand. All of a sudden from, from Festus here, he was plucked out of his hand. He was going to Rome completely relieved from this dilemma he found himself in. You know, I believe, I believe the Holy Spirit said, Paul, this is what you need to do. Get out of this mess. Now, with that being said, does anybody remember what uh, the Lord told Paul very earlier here in Acts, what he would, um, he would do to him? He was going to testify where? In Rome. Yep. And uh, he's on his way now. Now, if you were Paul, you probably wasn't thinking you were going this way to go to Rome. You'd much rather have first-class tickets going to Rome than to be a chained man. Going, but he's going there. And sometimes it may not work the way you want to, but by doing this, uh, he got himself out of the, the palm of the Jews, out of Festus' hands, and he appealed to Caesar. Verse 12, when Festus, when he had conferred with the council, he said, guys, this guy's appealed to Caesar. Now, for Festus, I don't know if it's his first case, starting out as governor. All of a sudden, his very first case, the criminal says, you're not giving me a fair trial. I want to go to Caesar. It probably didn't make him feel real good as governor just starting out. That this, this guy saying, you're not doing right here. I'm appealing to Caesar. Well, it probably didn't do him. But look how he worded here. Has thou appealed to Caesar? Unto Caesar thou shalt go. He had no choice. Boom. And guess what? Paul's out of there. Now, with that being said, do we have the Holy Spirit to help us when we have tense moments that we don't know what to say, or how we're going to get out of this? God can help us. And he gives us the Holy Spirit in those moments to deliver us and to give us understanding how we handle a difficult situation. What do I say? How do I get out of this? Because does the world hate us as believers? Now, define the world. Give me a definition of the world. What is the world? We talk about it. What is the world? How do we define the world? Okay, unbelievers. Okay. Okay, that's one way to say it. Okay, secular. Okay, the world is unbelievers, seculars. How about the world is society without God? To me, I, I, I kind of like that. It's society without God. That's the world. People that don't know God. And um, for Paul and for us, we live in this society that doesn't know God. But because we do, the Holy Spirit's given to us the spirit of truth. And we shall testify and bear witness of God's working in our life. Anybody have any thoughts or insights here about what we've looked at here tonight?
You ever had any situations where you needed the Holy Spirit to give you a, a, some wisdom and some understanding of how to deal with it? Yes, Judy? Okay. What was the scripture in the very beginning that you, that you cited in Deuteronomy that says, oh, the yes. Word? Yes, it was um, Deuteronomy 22.5. Yes, Deuteronomy 22.5. Yes, yes, that's Deuteronomy 22.5. Okay. Any other thoughts here tonight? Are you glad you have the Holy Spirit? Yes, Joanne. When you were talking about the world, what I always picture in my mind of the world is those things that would keep me from God. Okay, okay. Do you know what I mean? What right. The world, these are things that are in the world. Yes, okay. And so that's kind of what I think of is, you know, going to keep me from God, okay. then that's part of the world. Yes. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I do. Yes. Yes, that's, that's part of that. ought to be on, on him, and anything that's going to keep me from that is kind of the world. <laughs> right. That's right. But we, but we have to be discerning as God's people, because there's always that tension. The world is trying to influence the church. The church is trying to influence the world. There's always that tension that's pulling. And what we as God's people want to do is make sure we end up on the right side of things, not the wrong side. Because the world's going to pull us the wrong way unless we say, for me and my house, we're going to what? Serve the Lord. So we've got to make that decision whose side we're on. All righty, well, let's pray here. Dear Lord, I thank you for what we've looked at here tonight. And, and Father, we as believers, thank you for the Holy Spirit that helps us. And for Paul here, Lord, thank you for delivering him out of this, this dilemma that he was in, Lord. He couldn't stay and Lord, his options before the Jerusalem Council or before Festus were not good. And yet, Lord, you gave him the wisdom to appeal to Caesar. And that way he got himself out of this dilemma that he found himself in for years. So, Lord, help us as believers when we face those difficult situations and the pressure from the world to conform to the vain philosophies and ungodly philosophies of the world. I pray that we'd be strong in faith and that we would give a good testimony and that, Lord, that we'd be waiting on you in the long hours. And, Father, help us toward this end, that we can be strong believers in a world that wants to pull us away from God. Lord, may we be drawn closer to you through our love for you and love for your word and standing for the truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.